Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity C Sharp Bite Size tutorial. In the previous video, we learned about player prefs as a really quick and simple way to save simple data. But for most cases, you don't want to save all your data separately in player prefs with all their different keys. It would be much better if you could create a single class with your save data and save that to your PC. It would then also allow you to add encryption or do whatever you want with this file. You could go save it online or wherever you want, but we're going to be doing it locally for this video. And if after this video you want me to delve more into saving systems and loading data, then just let me know down below and I'll be sure to do that. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So you might notice that my inspector looks weird. Just for this example, I've moved the inspector to the middle so it's easier to see and I've made it bigger. All we're going to be doing is working on this one script called saving loading example. Okay, I've made it in its own folder and I've stuck it on this game object. There's no setup required, just make a script basically. And here it is. So I'll be covering two quick ways of doing the same job. The first one using JSON serialization, which will be very quick and simple. The only downside is that it's very, very easy for anyone, even if they don't know coding, to come across the file and easily change the values to cheat. Whereas with the binary serialization, if you look at the file, it's not human readable. It's kind of hard to actually understand what's going on. So it'll deter quite a lot of people. Obviously, if you want to deter most people, then of course you want to either save it online so they don't have access to the file or use encryption or both. But yeah, if you're saving it locally, you still might want to use encryption just to make it harder for the person to deter them from cheating. At the end of the day, if the data is stored on their PC, they can do whatever they want with it. So, you know, they'll probably be able to find a way to decrypt it eventually. But regardless, we're going to get into it now. OK, let's start off with some data. So public class example data. OK, now I'm going to just have some fields here like a string, an int and a bool. OK, remember, it's best to go for basic types because certain things you can't serialize. OK, the basic types like string, int, bool, um, float and enum, you know, these different things, you can you can save those really easily. There's no problems. As soon as you start trying to save things like scriptable objects, mono behaviors and complex types, then you start getting problems. So you can do some research into what you can and what you can't save or you can just trial and error to see if it works. But your goal is usually just to save as little data as you possibly can. There's no reason why you should ever need to save a mono behavior to a file. It wouldn't really make sense anyway. So we're going to store simply a string, okay, name. We're going to store a an integer, age, okay. And we'll store a, whoops, we'll store a bool, maybe has one, okay. So this might be the data about your player you want to save. I don't know why you'd want to save this data, but maybe you do. Okay, now this can be whatever you want. As I said, you can add more stuff here. It doesn't really matter. Now, the way I'm going to actually change these variables is via the inspector. So I'm going to make it serialized field private example data. Okay. Now, yeah, I'll be showing two ways to do with JSON and with binary formatting. So the JSON way, we're going to make a method in here for saving and loading. So private void save and private void load. Whoops. OK, and we can add the context menu thing to call it in the inspector. So we'll call it load and save. Now, one thing to note as well is we need to mark this class as serializable because, as I said, the data in here needs to be serializable and string int bool, they all are. Our class by default isn't. We have to tell it that it is. And it kind of takes our word for it. It trusts us. So uh, we know that it's serializable because we're only using types like this. These can all be serialized. So serializable. OK. And now we take our data and we need to convert this class into a string, okay? And the string will look something like this. It'll say name, colon, uh, and then Nathan. Then age, colon, 19, and thingy, colon. And then for the bool, it usually doesn't store them as true, I don't think. It stores it as ones and zeros, okay? Just because that's how booleans are usually stored. They're not actually stored as strings. So what we need to do is we say string JSON, this is our JSON data, equals, then there's a class called JSON utility with a convert method to JSON, okay? We're converting to JSON. It wants an object, okay? An object is just like an instance of a class, right? So we want to pass in our object, which is example data, okay? And it's going to convert that to a string if it can. If it can't, it'll just be an empty string. Um, so obviously we know this is going to work because this class is serializable, uses these types. And now we just want to write this to a text file. So the way we do that is file dot write all text. Now, if this file doesn't exist, it just creates it for us. So that's quite handy. And we'll say um, the first thing is Wherever you save it on your PC, it might change based on your operating system if you're using Windows, Mac, whatever, right? Now, there's always something called the persistent data path. So if we do application.persistentdatapath, okay, this basically means it's a path that you are sure is going to exist regardless of operating system. And then in here, you just need to put the actual save file. So we'll just say 
slash save. And as for file extension, you can save it as whatever you want. You can go txt, you can go dap, you can go whatever you want. Um, all the file extension is, is a way to tell uh, the operating system, you know, this is like the other, for example, if you do txt, this is like other text files, you can open it in the same programs like uh, Notepad and Microsoft Word. Um, if you went for something that doesn't actually exist, like dap for, you know, dap for dino files or whatever, then all that, that happens is if they try and open the file, it'll say, you know, we don't know what that means, so uh, do you want to open it in Notepad? And then you say yeah, and it works just fine. So I'm going to go with this, just as an example. And now, that's pretty much it. We also, sorry, also have to do comma and then the actual data that we want to store. So, JSON. So if we head back over into Unity now, you see Nathan, 19, and true. But this isn't actually saved yet. Now we can right click and press save. But before I show you that, if we head over to our um, Windows Explorer, assuming you're using Windows, okay, you can do percent, whoops, uh, percent app data percent, okay, then go from roaming back to app data into local low. And then a lot of these will basically be Unity things, not all Unity necessarily, but what you can do is you can find the company name. Now, if you've not changed it in your project, it'll be default company, but I'm pretty sure mine's Dapper Dino. So we go in here, see some of my projects. Then here we have Unity C sharp byte size and it's empty, okay? This is the persistent data path. Now, if I press save, right click, save and go back. Notice how we now have a save.dap file. If I try and open it, it'll tell us, you know, we don't know what that means. Use notepad, okay. And here we are, we have name, Nathan, age, 19, has one true. It actually just stores true. Uh, I think that's only for JSON. If you do um, binary, which we'll be doing in a second, it'll store it differently. But that's the point. We've stored our data like this. And we can now very easily go back, write a load method that just instead of writing text this file, reads text from the file, and then converts it back into that object. And we can then, you know, display it in Unity. So let's give that a go. So to load, we just want to say if the file does not exist, so file.exists, um, and then we just copy paste the same path, okay? So if that file does not exist, then we want to return, okay? So if they press load and there's no save file, then just don't do anything. But if there is a save file, then let's go get JSON equals JSON utility dot uh, from JSON. We have to give it a type, so the type is example data, and the only thing we're missing now is the actual data itself, JSON, okay? So um, whoops, sorry, this is wrong. We are not saying string JSON equal to this. We're saying our example data equal to this. But we need JSON, so string JSON equals. Now, just like here, we convert it to JSON right to a file. We're doing it backwards. So we're now going to read from this file. So let's copy the string again and say file dot read all text path is that. Okay. So we're saying if the file doesn't exist, return. But if it does, go read it. We've now got our JSON data, and we're now telling this uh, method, here's our JSON data, here's the class it should be modeled as. Now, can you convert it back, please? And then if we do that, we can watch it work in Unity. So well, we apparently have an error here, which I think I've now fixed. I just need to press Control S to save, let it compile. Then in a second, what we can do is we can uh, go to our file, delete it just to show it works. Okay, press play. Now, if we change this, whoops, we can then change it to be false and we'll just put a random thing in 50 and then we'll say Nathan or we'll just say this. Right click, save, and just to show that it works, we'll go in here, here's the data. Then if we stop playing, start again, then what we should be able to do is it's gone back to the default data that I set in the file. But if I right click and press load, it actually loads up all the data and changes this, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll delete this file and we'll show you the binary way. So what we can do is we can now actually comment out the saving because the saving is done differently. So the saving is like this. We make a new binary formatter. Okay, new binary formatter. We then make this thing called a file stream and I'll call it file. And the way you do this is you do file.create. Now if the file already exists, it doesn't create it again. And we use the path. So let's take the path. Okay, so now we've created a file if it doesn't already, already exist. If it does exist, then it actually just basically gets it. Okay, so we've got reference to the file. BF. Now we want to serialize our data into that file. So we can say bf.serialize. It wants a stream, which is the file. And graph is the data. The data is example data. Okay, and once we've done this, we then need to close the file. Okay. Um, and then if we go down to loading, the way loading changes is we don't need this anymore, okay? Then we want to do almost a reverse, so we still need a binary formatter. Then instead of file.create, we'll take this back, and we'll say file.open, okay? 
same path with the file mode of open as an extra parameter. So now we are referencing the file and instead of um, bf.serialize, we want bf.deserialize the stream file. And then we actually want to save that. Now the problem is this doesn't know what type it is just off the file, it's an object, it's, it's anything. So we need to cast it. So we say example data equals, and then we're casting to example data, whatever data we get back here. And then once we're done, just like up there, we file.close. And now we have a much better save system. So if we go back over to Unity and we save, you'll notice that the file data is now quite different. It's still human readable to some extent, but nowhere near the same as the JSON was. It's not just simply name equals this, age equals this. You see some of the fields here and the you know, bit of the data here, but it's just not as human readable. So it will deter quite a few people. Then obviously, if you want to go to the next step, you can actually add your own encryption in. So you can uh, get your data ready to save, encrypt it, save it. And then when you're decrypting, get your data out of the file, decrypt it, and then load it back up. So it's really up to you what you want to do next. As I said, uh, this is quite a simple save system. It's obviously more uh, intricate than the player press and it's more useful in a lot of cases. It's really good for saving like your player's settings. So you might have a class like this uh, just for storing your player settings like the volume and you know whether they've turned on and off uh, different things like motion blur or whatever. You can save all that in a class like this and very easily load and save it back up. So that's quite useful. Um, but if you want actual complex save data for your game, like I said, an RPG, you have an inventory that, you know, at one point might store 20 items, but later on might store 15, uh, may, might store 35. It really depends, you know, maybe you get more bag space or whatever. Um, it's up to you. So if you want a more intricate, more advanced save system where we actually have to start writing mono behaviors and having, you know, uh, interfaces to tell these different classes, you know, you have to have a save method and then we implement the save methods separately per class then we can go to that. But that is a bit more complicated and we will get there eventually. So let me know down below if you want to see that kind of thing. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. Thanks as always for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Taylor Rustio, John Selig, Liz Kimber, Drandy, Matt Fryer, Jay Colby, LN, Fabian Reno, Malvin, Sunran, David McDermott, Exit, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Lucas, and Ilya Moon. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by checking out any of those or following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.